as a, an additional heat exchanger uh, used as on-off. When we knew that the temperature of the air reached a certain value, we can swap, in, divert the water back from the system on the free cooling coil and then back to the system if we get enough capacity out of this. With our unit, we do, we say this is a dynamic free cooling because uh, the system we use, we have the water coil, we inside, I have a movie to show you for interesting to, that you can see how it, it works. But we have the free cooling coil installed on the external part of the unit, and then we have the condenser coil. So the water uh, return from the system is entering. Uh, <coughs> in, in, we have a three-way valve, and we decide if we use the free cooling coil or not. We use the free cooling coil when the temperature of the air is two degrees less than the return temperature of the water. So means we have energy to get from the air. And so in this case, when we have this case, so the temperature of the air less two degrees than the, the return temperature of the water, we divert the water on the coil, and then we go back to the uh, evaporator. And we can see, in this case, we are working with compressor only, so we don't use the free cooling coil. We enter, we return from the circuit with a pump, we go inside the evaporator, we cool down the water, and we go out to the system. In this case, we are using the free cooling coil because the condition I said before, and when we use the free cooling coil, the fan is running at the maximum speed, and we, here you see the condenser coil like it is, but in reality the condenser coil is split into two sections, because when we run the fan at the maximum speed, to get as much as possible benefit from the temperature of the air, we drop down the the pressure on the condenser coil. In this case, we cut the condenser coil into two sections to reduce the, the drop of the pressure in the coil. We go first on the coil, here. We enter on the free cooling coil. Out of the free cooling coil, we enter on the evaporator, and we give with the evaporator what the free cooling coil was not able to give to the water to reach the set point of the system. Am I clear enough mm -hmm. if you have a... Mm -hmm. So, in this case, we work with compressor and free cooling together. <coughs> then, if the temperature of the water is dropping and dropping, we, and we see that the compressor is not anymore, uh, and, and we don't need any more the compressor to cool down to the set point, the water, we use only the free cooling coil. So we enter here, we enter on the free cooling, we cool down the water, we enter on the evaporator, but the compressor are switched off, and we go out to the system. In this case, all the energy, energy is provided only with the power of the fan. In this case, the ER, is enormous. I mean, we use only the power, the input power of the fan. This is a unit with uh, the free cooling without tank. As you can see here, we have a flow switch. In this case, we have the three-way valve, air vent on the pipe. Uh, this is an operation we used to do on the contractor when we charge the water in the system. Always we are very careful careful to, to clean all the air in the system, otherwise the unit will not run, or if we have uh, too much air in the system, the flow switch is uh, vibrating, so it's not, uh, the unit will never, will never start. 
And then, as you can see here, we have, in this case, we have the unit with two compressors, but we can get also the unit with four compressors. That means two compressors per each circuit on this kind of unit. Uh, or we can get the unit with hydraulical kit also inside, free cooling with hydraulical kit inside, like the unit you can see here. Luigi? Yes. In Europe, do they use glycol fill tanks or do they just fill the systems and let it run? Usually, um, most of the free cooling, are, they use the glycol. Just no, glycol. but do they use tanks to store extra glycol? No. No. So you don't have uh, glycol stations? Or, or no. I, to be honest, uh, most of the installation I've seen, they charge with 30. It depends from the, yeah. the, the area. But let me say, I'm thinking now in Russia, some data center, they charge uh, the maximum 35, 40% glycol. Right. And that's it. There's no... Uh, the process to charge the glycol is the most complicated, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Because in particular, when we have, uh, they mix together at the beginning with the water. I if they are wrong to load it, and this happened exactly in Russia, there was a kind of foam in the coil, and it took uh, two weeks uh, to take <laughs> it out, all the because the foam is very sticky, very, mm -hmm. very with a very small bubble. So the process to load the glycol is extremely important. So uh, sometimes with our uh, contractor, with our right. friends, we teach them how to do it. So we fill, we fill the glycol. We have a tank of glycol, and we filled together with the water in order to get an homogeneous uh, mix in the system. Well, once it's done properly once, there's no problem. What they do oftentimes in our installations is we'll have a, uh, a pump package. You've already described a little bit with the two pumps uh, running and also a glycol package, which will have uh, it'd be a station full of 50 gallon drum of pure glycol and then it will have a means of either manually or automatically charging the system if it begins to lose lose glycol. See, well, I don't need, we have a... a it's a convenience our, factor. Yeah, exactly. Anything. Our biggest customer for uh, process cooling is Bayer mm -hmm. in Europe where they produce, uh, they have a uh, different kind of, uh, they produce the DVD, the plastic, mm -hmm. you know, for the, the base, for the DVDs. In, the, in this case, they have an automatic station, they analyze, mm -hmm. also the pump are always running to keep homogeneous. Right. They have a, a BMS, let me say, to control continuously. Right. The, the, because this is, could be a very big problem for the mold. If they have a uh, high concentration or low concentration of glycol, so they are very careful on that. Yeah, could be both sides. Most of the cases we don't see when they. I see when they do the installation, they have a system. They are very careful to load it up, but then when it's a closed system, they are there. They. They run continuously the pump, or when they don't use the system, they slow down. But every I don't know two hours they run for half an hour the pump anyway mm -hmm. to keep moving the system. And uh, COP clearly with a chiller only operation we have uh, like we said a 2.8 uh, COP. Then when we use chillers brush free cooling depend on the temperature of the water. In this case, we simulate uh, water in out 10, 15, or 100 gas. So, Let me check. 10 is 50 degrees. 50. 50. And uh, we have uh, 50, 60. 59. Ah. With water, 50, 60 water in out, mm -hmm. return water 60 from the system down to 50. 
we have uh, a performance you can see based on the water out uh, ambient temperature when the ambient is going down we increase the free cooling uh, uh, capacity and obviously we increase the EER of the unit <coughs> and so in particular let me say well, where we have, uh, well, where we need a constant capacity, for instance, for a data center or I don't know other application where we need to cool also in winter, this is the perfect solution. is also extremely efficient solution to provide the right uh, uh, unit for that application. Luigi. Yes. That EER, when you have the ambient temperature dropping, but you are on free cooling, yes. why isn't the EER going straight up? Uh, because uh, the coil performance is uh, based on the temperature of the water. And so, much lower is the uh, ambient temperature I start uh, to reduce the fan speed uh, of the motor and so we reduce the input power that's the reason why the is going up because the power supply actually when we work in free cooling here we have only the fan, the fan uh, power right. running right. but then we slow down reduce the ambient okay. The, the fan and so we get a better performance. That's the reason why it's like this. Um, Tony, these EERs, have you converted these to North American or not? Because we, uh, we, no. we are getting EERs over 100 with free cooling up in Vancouver right now. These are, these are in watt to watts, we convert them to BTUs. Ah, uh, this is watt to watt, sorry. We end up, yeah. The highest we've seen so far is 140. Officially, this we should multiply by three because yeah. this is two point eight. What we call ER. Yeah. Oh, I'm very sorry. It's okay. No, it's good. I will. Yeah. They were happy with sixty. <laughs> okay.